inspiration, this love I have planned and meditation set to me. Ahoy, ahoy. Welcome aboard the Nautilus, where we talk about all things sea life. And we try not to get too off topic talking about the things that remind us of the sea life we're talking about. Hi, I'm Fiona. And I'm Paul. And I'm Ben. Yay, we have a guest this week. This yes. is our dear friend and bandmate, Ben Stewart. I Ohio. say, in honor of the guest, we should let the guest go first. I totally agree. <laughs> So we're going to turn it over to Ben, who's going to tell us about... Uh, I researched the specific stingray that murdered Steve Irwin. <laughs> Whoa. Damn. And it was uh, quite... <laughs> was it premeditated? Was it like first yeah. degree? Or was where it kind of like a crime now? of passion <laughs> kind of thing? <laughs> like... The stingrays have short tempers. I think it was a crime of passion. This is like one of those like follow-up like... <laughs> Many years later. I mean, <laughs> we was... shouldn't joke too much about that. I was, I was sad. Where was are they now? Like, 2006. Yeah, like, right, where is the... <laughs> It was no surprise to anyone that Steve got killed by an animal. No. Yeah. I mean, I'm I sure that's, that's all he Steve would have asked for. would have wanted. Exactly. He was eight days into filming his new show, Ocean's Deadliest. Wow. Oh, man, fuck. Because that never came out, I'm guessing. No one, you know, the irony was lost on no one. <laughs> <laughs> at least they could have published the first seven days, at yeah. least. Yeah, I mean, they literally have footage of him getting, like, um, Roman's, uh, Julius Caesar style stabbed. Oh, like, oh wow. But they never released it. Like 27 course. times or whatever it was? The cameraman said hundreds within seconds, which to me is, like, uh, I didn't know That's like a humming speed. Yeah. So yeah. he was only the third, uh, third known fatal like attack from a stingray in Australia. So it's not common. Wow. Damn. In my mind, we associate stingrays with this. Is that because of him maybe? Or Yeah, I think it did nothing for their reputation. Oh yeah. Or just like because they're called stingrays. Yeah, it's like clearly people knew they could sting, but it's not a I always heard the legend that they're just like buried under the sand and then you like step on them and they get pissed. Yeah. And then like well, sticky with their barb. Yeah, it's just for defense, and it's mostly used right. against like reef sharks and other. Right, but um, I've never heard of them like predators. machine gun like repeated stabbings. No, so I mean, I don't. You know, I know this is like potentially a bedtime program, so I don't want to get too gory with the details. <laughs> but like, get gory. <laughs> he, they're in chest deep water off Queensland, and. Um, I don't know what they were filming, but this man, uh, not manta ray, this, uh, short tail, uh, sh- sorry, let me, let me give the scientific name here. Yeah. yeah. The Dasiatus brevicaudata. Nice. I have a better image of it now. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like. <laughs> I see where it is on the tree. <laughs> yeah, your Latin stem <laughs> yeah, knowledge just kinda... immediately. Yeah, the brevicaudata means short tail. Mm, okay, yeah, um, brev. And, and this is like. They're quite different than manta rays. You should look up a picture, but um, I don't have that many fish facts about it because I mostly just researched this one that killed Irwin, but I thought it was pretty incredible that these um, short tail stingrays get up to 14 foot across. Wow. And then I looked up manta rays and they get up to 23 foot across. I knew manta rays I have seen one of those. Massive. Freaking yeah. insane. Um, I guess some other interesting notes would be... Uh, well, first of all, it's really hard to find a photo of a, st- a stingray's skeleton. I'm still not sure there's anything on Google that is actually a stingray's skeleton. I mean, I'm looking Ooh. at these photos now. I'm wondering what the skeleton would be, because like, most yeah, of the shape it of it seems to be just like... It's all flowy it's and just cartilage. Yeah. Well, it's all cartilage, yeah. so I'm sure the skeleton doesn't There's not preserve. much there. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the barb preserves, and when you look at the barb up close or the stinger up close it's like a spear point with a bunch of little barbs facing back so it's like just ribbon where ribbon. is the stinger wow. is it in the tail it's off the side of the tail oh do you see it no but i had never imagined yeah a lot of people think it's like barb. at the tip of the tail but it, from what i could see it was like off kind of like askew like from from where the tail begins from the end of the, 
the body, let's call it, or the mm-hmm. wings, mm-hmm. and then the tail begins, and like, uh, like at the sort of origin of the tail is also a little bit that sticks off to the side. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I see. Stinger. Okay. Mm. I, it it seemed. I mean, the there's stingers. no like video of them stinging things. The stinger right. is absolutely just for defense. They don't hunt. With they the don't stinger. hunt with it. Oh. They just like their mouth is on the bottom, you know, right, so they're just right. like floating along and they're just like eating crabs and yeah. mollusks and stuff Here, off the... yeah here's something slightly different this picture i'm seeing up close this this barb appears to actually be a splinter off toward the end exactly, of the tail yeah. ah i got it i got it they're said to be poisonous but i think that it's like a pretty minor poison mostly for it's like their flesh to like eat them you mean what oh no the sorry poisonous. the stinger supposedly has some poison somehow but there's no known antivenom and there's not really much research there's not much research on these animals at all. So That's Steve like, Irwin didn't die from venom. He died from like the... It like punctured his heart. The, like the... the slash lung. Also. Yeah, it was totally like a mechanical injury. Not oh my God. Wow, so yes. they... So like what's crazy about that is that they clearly have this much control over the very end of their tail. Like, like that they're able to aim it. So, I mean, not that mm-hmm. they knew where the heart was, but that they're able to control that barb so separately from just the tail kind of like flopping yeah. and lashing or whatever. Yeah. Like that's, that is surprising kind of when you think about the, the like mechanics and the direction of what the end of like a long wiggly stingray tail is. Yeah. The kind accuracy of, and also the force right. involved. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's insane. So like puncture like bone. Well, and like a right through, and and like, right wetsuit through ribs or, or yeah. Yeah. Um, a kind of a sad fact is like within eight days of Steve's death, um, up to ten rays were like mutilated off the cor- off the coast of Australia and then like washed up dead. Like they were cutting <laughs> the stingers off as like a oh, sign boy. of solidarity with like the biggest animal lover in the world. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. Like completely yeah. missing the like reality of that yeah. situation. Okay. I mean, they have been, people have been known to just do that anyway, because they're, like, freaked out by these animals, you know? I think but this is, like... It seemed to be in connection. I, they're definitely in the category of, like, totally, no one really knows about them yeah, that, very much. Right. We all say Which stingray, is, and even though we have the word manta ray in our lexicon, but then we all say stingray just kind of automatically from the time we're kids. But then, why, are we, like, what is it? Like, no one's really, wait, we didn't even know if they were, are they known for stinging? Are they known for... Yeah, no, not, not, not really, really, I guess. Yeah. Not really. I mean, there are some great um, articles in The Sun, which I don't... I think that's, like, kind of a tabloid. I'm not sure. But uh, there's, like... I, I think so. Interviews so, with the stingray. Like, <laughs> his motive, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's, like, you know, it's after the fact, and it's, you know, he's, like, calling in from prison, but... Like, stingray is still not talking. <laughs> no, it's, like, literally these, like, small stingrays. <laughs> It was like in China, this guy was swimming in these shallows and a stingray like stung him in his genitals and then it could, he couldn't get it out. So it was just like hanging off of him and he was like on the <laughs> beach. Like, <laughs> okay. And everyone was like, Make a big one? You alright? No, it was like a this, small oh, one. Oh, you said this is a tiny a one. Small one. Oh, dear. Um, <laughs> Are you alright? Yeah. We're working it out. <laughs> oh. We're just processing. It'll clear I guess out. they're called stingrays because the tail of any ray looks like a stinger. It looks like a giant, like, yeah, magnified version of like what a bee. Obviously, yeah. yeah. It looks like it, whether or not it is one, but it looks like yeah, as if they like jet backwards and impale things. Yeah. So you know, this is the short tail stingray that killed Steve Irwin. We don't. Do you, do you know, like, in the kerfuffle? That's such a <laughs> in the moment. That's such a weird word to use for like a really sad moment. Um, did did that ray escape? Or oh yeah, that, it just swam off. Like they didn't end up with it. Yeah. So the cameraman. So first of all, Irwin had like standing orders with all his cameramen, or I don't know how many there were, but it's like if something happens, don't put the camera down. Like just film wow, the whole thing. That's really that makes me respect him so Which much. is pretty yeah. cool. Because yeah. ultimately, like you will have some sort of scientific evidence out of that probably if it's not yeah. released to the public that's good it shouldn't be but like there's something that is like a, a solid hard proof right. of animal behavior that way right but what was so crazy is the cameraman didn't actually know he had even gotten hit like it was all so quick and the 
the ray just kind of like swam by him and then swam off and he panned and like followed the ray as it left and then he panned back and Steve is just like in this massive pool of blood wow. just standing oh there God. like do you know like how they got this hundreds of times thing was that like from I don't know contact, no, the cameraman just like wounds or oh, that's just I like should have I mean, could look up his name but yeah he just he said that and it's like well you didn't even know I think it must just be from the wounds. Yeah, yeah well, I just I just wonder yeah. from from the point of view of like trying to conceptualize how this ana- like how this part of the animal works, how like how that would be down. possible. I mean, it yeah. makes sense could, for it to maximize like mechanical damage against a shark or something. Yeah. It's like puncture stop, stop, all stop, of stop, the stop. organs, you know, rather than and sharks it, have re- such like tough skin. And yeah, stuff, right, right, right. I guess it would make sense for them to have like a really like something really powerful plus it's probably oh, like real. by the time you're doing that to a shark it's probably already like half eating you so you're yeah like might as well take it and that makes sense you. that the tail can like bend around and get to all these different angles wow. right sense, right, right. You know, as it's like getting <sighs> clamped really down on easy um, and this wow. is not something that other rays have the stinger um no i th- i actually didn't look that up i don't know either i mean if you have a ray then i hear of a stingray like, I remember going to the Baltimore Aquarium or whatever, and you can, like, pet rays. I'm sure you they don't have a petting zoo if the, all rays have stingers. Like a, yeah, that's true. So and sure a it's... manta ray is, like, those, those... Manta rays definitely don't. Yeah. They don't I remember. Oh. you know, for sure. I mean, I don't know. I'm there also thinking of... There was always a myth that manta rays would, like, squeeze people to death by, like, enveloping them in their, in their fins, but that's a total myth. Wow, you have a lot of ray myths. This is another... I've cataloged. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's what I've got for this episode. Thank you, well, guys. I think Thank we should you. give a cheers to Steve Irwin. Cheers to Steve Irwin. Yeah. Pour one out for Steve. Pour Seriously. One out for Steve. I really loved and, his show back when I was a kid. I miss him. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I went first last time. Do you want to go now this time? Sure. Or yeah. Do you want to save yours for last? Because I know it's... No, I went last super... last time. Okay. I mean, mine's not super anything. It's just... It's just... Yours one, is a little bit celebrity. I mean, not in the way that amongst that many of the is, fishes but in the sea. yours has this whole book that's been kind of a Well, kind of okay. So my sea creature for this week is the Greenland shark. Ooh. Yeah. So some short facts about it. Very cool. Um, this habitat is in the summertime. It goes... It usually lives in, um, in like the Arctic, northern Arctic waters. But in the summertime, it, go, it does go down to like the Gulf of Mexico. They but, migrate? Yeah, they migrate. But when they migrate to the south, they stay in like very deep waters, like up to like 2,400 feet. Whoa. Yeah. So they just Cold like follow water. trench Cold lines water. down. Cold water. Like they usually <laughs> stay in water that's below freezing, actually. I wonder why they migrate. Yeah, for sunlight or something. There is very little, like, actually, like, observed, um, like, um, science on them. Like, they're very difficult to observe because they're so deep. They're very, um, they're kind of, they're tough to find. Um, but they're, they're pretty massive. I mean, they're, they can get up to 24 feet long. Wow. That's horrifying. Which, yeah. I mean, it's... That's gigantic. Just because, like, I know how particularly gruesome this animal looks compared yeah. to a lot of sea creatures which are like oh how alien but like kind of beautiful like the green and shark is just objectively yeah. like an like ugly a great terrifying white shark animal is is oh, objectively blah. terrifying but it's objectively beautiful right at the same time you know and you can look at that and be like it's a really amazing the green, yeah the green and shark is, is like a, it's it's a hunk. It's not great. I mean, no. It's a hunk of. <laughs> I forgot what hunk means. <laughs> it's a hunk it is of. not a hunk. It's, it's like a, David no, Hasselhoff. Like a, like... <laughs> Red uh, shorts one time everything. I stayed in a hostel in Berlin that was dedicated in part to David Hasselhoff. He, it a has celebrity the. It, what? Like, what is. Yeah, it's it a has... Hasselhoff, and he made it in the American film industry. And it was. Dude, why is this It was the official, so like ugly. the basement of this hostel was the official David Hasselhoff. I love how anybody listening to this episode thinks I know a lot about David Hasselhoff. <laughs> you, you knew more than I did. I didn't know why his giant mural was painted on the basement of this hostel. Yeah, isn't anyway, it, isn't it why is it so ugly? Yeah, it's very ugly. It's it never comes to the surface. It's very ugly, and I have a theory on why it's ugly. It's just my own theory. Uh, but first, um, 
it's it is an extremely slow swimmer and it actually i remember last week <laughs> i had the dwarf seahorse which, which was the, the slowest, slowest fish. fish which would swim at three feet per hour i think you said five three to five feet per hour <laughs> i love a good range <laughs> but this is the slowest fish in terms of it's like um mechanical undulations so it's like such a massive fish but like the it's like tail beat is the slowest tail beat of any fish and its maximum cruising speed is 1.6 miles an hour My, okay. <laughs> for a 24 foot long shot well it's got <laughs> that is ridiculous uh, he goes all wait, the way to mexico one back. Foot, you say one foot an hour one no the seahorse goes three to five feet per no, hour. This, is this miles goes 1.6 miles, miles per hour. But still, when you yeah. think about how a fish can't help but kind of be moving forward, you well, know, unless it's specifically trying not to. And yeah. like the average human can walk, like a walking pace is like two to three miles an yeah, hour. Yeah, right. Sure. right. That's like <laughs> yeah. an ambling. That's serious. Well, okay, but I mean, I know you're going to get to this fact, but well, don't, don't jump why is it that they're not in such a rush? Well, yes, they're so. mostly, the theory is that they're mostly scavenger feeders, and they're kind of apex predators, so they don't have anything that preys on them, and so they're not worried about anything, they just swim around, and they, like, really feed off carcasses that, like, sink to the bottom. Right. Um, and, because they find seals, and, like, belugas and narwhals in their stomach and everything, um, but, like, scientists are kind of baffled, like, how do they catch these these animals if they just like swim so slow but they think they just it's like dumb mostly luck. scavenge yeah and um yeah and most are actually blind due to this parasite which attaches onto their eye and and it makes like most suspicions they find are effectively blind because of this parasite what? guys not really... because it's so deep but because there's so because there's a parasite but First of all, I think it's, it's a great advantage for them to be blind because then they're more attracted to each other because they can't see how hideous they are. <laughs> mm. You know? I mean, I think that would That's be nice. a very good scientific If you point. look like a Greenland shark, I wouldn't want to know what you look like. So, <laughs> if also... I was another Greenland shark, I would be disappointed enough in myself, let alone <laughs> looking at you also. But I wonder, like, is this parasite something that has had a successful evolution because they don't really need their eyes that much? No, but that's the, the theory, which has not been proven, but it's a theory that the, the parasite has a certain, like, bioluminescence, so it actually attracts fish, which, I said it's mostly a scavenger, but they think it might also eat, like, live prey too, and this might act as, like, a lure. You're telling like me that ugly-looking fucking shark yeah. has glowing... Blind it's eyes. Glowing blind worms. Yeah, and they're not they're not like they're not normal eyes. They're like I mean it's not its eyes. Yeah. They're like little little like worms that are dangling out like a few inches from its eye sockets. Yeah, it it's truly horrible. disgusting. Yeah. I gotta I yeah. can find a picture of that. Look it up. And look up Greenland shark eye. Greenland oh, yeah. shark eye parasite. <laughs> eye worm. And but another very cool fact is that is the longest known lifespan of any vertebrate yeah. and they've been observed wow. living over 300 years oh. and in theory they live over 500 years yeah, in theory um they think they they i i forget how they they specified it but they found one and they thought it had a span of like confirmed 300 but probably up to 500 you know um, it's one of those up to facts yeah that they say on TV. Up to. Up I mean, to the 12 is, hours of last It's so rarely observed and everything. They, they hadn't interviewed all of them. Um, <laughs> <they're very laughs> How long shy. have you been cruising blindly? <laughs> very shy. I heard and, this one thing um, in that book uh, about there was this one shark <laughs> in particular that they measured its year, however, and uh, it had been alive since the signing of the Declaration, Declaration of Independence, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, for sure. I mean, there's definitely ones going back to that age. Um, they say they don't reach sexual maturity until 150 years. What? Are they endangered? Um, they're, um, I don't know if anyone cares. They're not least concerned, <laughs> but they're they're near threatened. That's which so is mean. Like anyone a, I am, I am, care, it's us. I am <laughs> all about conserving all fish. No, I'm just joking because no, they're no. so ugly. But they, they don't have... Um, 
Well, I'll get to why, but they're they're not sought after for their meat. Um, mm, that and, is so true. And um, in the Scandinavian countries, they were hunted um, because they were a nuisance to fisheries. They thought they ate too many fish, so they would kill a lot of them. But that has um, become. Um, they should, they should just bones. lower all of their bull carcasses down there and distract them with that. Yeah, Save the cod. exactly. So, yeah, the book that Fiona was referencing was Shark Drunk, which is a, the one best of the coolest title. books. That's I've why read I picked it up. This was just a book by its sharks. title, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> um, the author is, oh boy. Oh, you had it ready this time. Morton, uh, how do you say it, with the O with the slash through it? Oh, uh, like mm. this is like strip and strips. Struxness? Struxness. Yeah, it's like an ur uh sound. Morton Struxness. Um, is he Danish? The book is Shark Junk. Hmm. He is... Um, I, I, think, I do I not know his ethnicity. Danish. I know that he travels to visit a friend of his off, off the, in the Lofoten Islands in Norway. In Norway. And, and this is where he experiences this, the stuff and the material that this book is based on. And his friend is uh, this avant-garde... Um, artist and just person who's just like had an entire life of like a subs subsistence living like on these islands and um together they just decide that they're gonna try to catch a greenland shark and there's this tradition in the scandinavian cultures of catching a greenland shark and um you which the method is to take all like a really rank rotting um highland bull carcass and you attach like a chain and a big hook in it and you just drop it in the water and you just come back every now and then and see if you yeah they'd you go out the they'd shark. go out just like we're sitting here with yeah. a box of wine they would be like literally i think one part in the book i read it like two years ago but like they like take a some large quantity maybe in a bag i don't know yeah. they take a bunch of wine out and they just like, sit on this boat all day long and they lower this chain like an insane i want to say yeah. in my mind it was ten thousand feet i like an insane amount of chain. That's, that's 10,000 feet. Okay, target. that's too much. But it, maybe a, a thousand. Chain. I mean, I <laughs> maybe it's it was. It's definitely a big chain. It was but... insane, <laughs> and they would just kind of like wait to try to. It like... was to the bottom of a very deep part yeah. of the ocean. This book is oh. so cool. You will learn so many other things through the lens of men fishing for a Greenland shark. Um, uh, but... but the tradition, the reason that it's kind of a tradition, and it's the reason that people don't eat it. Is that is the the flesh of it is very toxic, and if you if you eat the flesh that is not cured, in whatever way you would want to do to like um, cure take it. out the toxin. No, so the tradition it's almost like the ceremony thing where you eat it, but it becomes like a hallucinogen, like it it, it has some toxin in it. That's why um, it's called shark drunk. Yeah, yeah which makes you like extreme, like act like you're extremely drunk, and it's um there's uh. Did they lose consciousness? He didn't really much go my, into like like the actual. Yeah, like, I mean, my my memory in the book, as far as the description goes, was like, it kind of reminded me of like, maybe eating shrooms or something like that. I'm giving myself away a little bit, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there was there were hallucinogenic properties. There was also like vomiting. And yeah. it's sort of like food well, poisoning. Very go along. Yeah, but with a sort of psychoactive side effect and not just a totally t terrible physical feeling side and, effect. Uh, and how much meat do you have to eat to get the worms coming out of your eyes? <laughs> <laughs> are you interested? Are you, are you looking for a... <laughs> you have to eat most of them. I'm ways to looking, like, to set myself apart. Look? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and it's telling that Inuits who are just... Um, they're, they're pretty legendary for just living off the sea and using whatever they can. And they'll, they'll pretty much feed whatever they can to their dogs um, because they rely so much on the dogs. But they won't feed Greenland sharks to the dogs because it makes the dogs um, behave as if they're very drunk. Wow. So makes it even sense. affects drugs, dogs and everything. Wow. So. Was there anything about like the chemistry of the meat? Like, um, it said on? I had the toxin, which I actually thing. wrote it down. Uh, wait, let me find it. Let me find it. Um, oh boy, tough to read my handwriting. And it's like even uh, if you try, it... try, try, try. Oh boy, try methylamine. Try methylamine yeah. and oxide. And even if you cook it, 
if you prepare it in the right way, I think it's not toxic. You can leach the the toxin out. I of think it. that it's one of like a it's a curing thing. I think they have to like bury it and let it yeah. ferment or something. Well, that like is yeah, this. ferment. They, that's a yeah. They do that. Okay, I know that they do ferment sharks in the sand. Right, but I don't. I uh, my again. I thought that was like a separate Christmas tradition. I mean, it is. It is, like definitely fermented shark. Yeah. And even like. I don't know, there's a lot of fermented stuff in Scandinavian, like, really kind of very traditional cuisine. And, like, fermented is generous. Like, rotten is maybe more accurate. Yeah, yeah, I've heard uh, that. I heard that. I heard Anthony Bourdain say that on one show. <laughs> he was, like, not a fan generous. as much as he was enthusiastic about <laughs> this fermented whatever. But, yeah, I, I think fermentation is what... But I don't think it's an enjoyable food either way. I think that is what will eventually, like, deactivate the toxin. The n Dude, I'm going to see this eye worm in my nightmares tonight. Ben's taking the opportunity right now to look up a picture of the Greenland shark eye. You should, too. So you can also have nightmares. Wow, I'm I'm very impressed with myself. I found it. You found it? Okay. Here is an animal that I learned about by scrolling on the most fascinating and beautifully calming app slash website that I've ever encountered. It's a website. Neil, N E A L dot fun slash D dash C. Okay, so you can get that into Google. That was That's very, amazing. very literate. Neil, like the name Neil. I guess uh, is the I'm name just going to tell them how I, so I just, just searched deep, sea, deep scrolling. sea scrolling website. Deep sea scrolling and website. That was the first thing. Then you should look at this. I'm glad you have So this is like this wonderfully charming website um, with very cute, pleasing little. Uh, animations of different animals and it's a proportionally sized uh, chart if you continue to scroll and it takes several minutes to go through um, Mm -hmm. the whole thing is to scale of a phone obviously like the deepest part in the ocean which is the Marianas Trench uh, in the South Pacific and as you go down it it does not show you every animal so it's not overwhelming because that would be but it shows you just random animals that I guess this guy Neil? I hope I know what I'm talking about. Maybe this was not made by Neil. Maybe Neil means something totally different. (laughs) Thank you, Neil. Um, This guy animated, and uh, it shows to what depth they dive. It's so cool. I wish it had a little theme song to go to it. Majestic Sea Slug. I was going to say Sea Angels. Some week coming up. Okay, anyway, my animal is the Cuvier's Beaked Whale. Um, I was a little bit torn whether to say this Cuvier. Uh, I'm going to say Cuvier's. But uh, this is the deepest diving mammal. Um, and we love those superlatives, so it caught my eye. Um, actually, it caught my eye a few months ago when a friend, shout out to Michael Unterman, showed me this website. And I've subsequently showed it to everyone. Um, but this beaked whale, I was like, what is a beaked whale? Why can this animal dive so deep? Why can any mammal dive so deep? Mm. Okay, so here I am. The beaked whale um, is a whole... Um, grouping within the entire whale infra order, which is what cetacean is. So remember that, like tax the taxonomy chart in like sixth grade science, um, and you've got like your orders and your phylums and your families and all this stuff. So an infra order is a- another classification that is a rabbit hole I avoided going down um, of 
like within a big family or order, this obviously this is an order, it means below that. So somewhere between an order and what comes after it. And I didn't go that deep. Um, but th this is an infra order. And cetaceans are that. And this is like the word that means like sea monsters in Greek, I'm pretty sure, that whales and dolphins and porpoises all come out of. And so the beaked whale um, is a group within that. There are 22 species within it, but the beak the beak basically means that they have the same kind of like pointed nose area on the front of their face, just like a bottlenose dolphin. I'm going to come back to the classification of beaked whales and dolphins and like whales in general and stuff a little bit later. But uh, some stuff about beaked whales in general, just because they're sort of a really unknown whale group. Um, they're, they are so unknown because they are a really um, shy species. They're a shy mm. grouping of species. Um, so they're not seen very often. They don't travel in big groups. And they don't come to the surface very much because all of them tend to have very, like, deep diving habits. Um, my, like, that wax thing that I was talking about, um, they're the only group of whales that produce wax ester. Um, so all, whale, uh, all, all of the toothed whales have this, like, waxy producing bit in the front of their head. So like sperm whales are kind of famous for this. This is what um, was being, they, what's this why they were being hunted so the, vehemently. I thought the blubber was. Blubber too, but the also this sperma, wax. Um, like spermachetti. Spermachetti, yeah. But, um, it, yeah, yeah, this is like a, like a crazy thing. So that hub sort of thing at the front of their head, um, they Which is like the echolocation. produce wax of that, and it's what they use in order to resonate sound. Um, and the wax used... Oh, sorry, the wax produced by beaked whales is the only wax ester. And this is just an interesting wax because it's also produced by two different plants. Uh, and I'm going to try to pronounce this. The carnauba, carnauba, I'm not sure. Uh, the candelilla and beeswax. And these are all like the three most commonly found like commercial right. waxes from plants and an insect. And also it's inside of this type of whale's head. And that's Whoa. just like a cool fact about like how nature is. Hmm. Wow like doing so much more than we can categorize very easily. I don't know. That's just so cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, they are, they're a type of toothed whale. So dolphins are a type of toothed whale and porpoises and then also the beaked whales. Um, and then there are a few other types as well. Super famous like belugas and narwhals and sperm whales. As opposed to like baleen. As opposed to baleen whales. Um, so those two, the two groupings uh, of the whole cetacean like whale over umbrella is Mr. Hold on, I'm gonna say this right. Mr. Chetty? I think that it's with this Italian pronunciation. Setti, Mr. Setti or Mr. Chetty. And those are the baleen whales. And then Odontochetti, which is obviously like yep. Dante, sure. like Dante, yep. Dent, any of that is teeth So, stuff. but the beaked whales is different, like a sperm whale is not a beaked whale. Correct. Right? Yeah, so the but beaked whale. Like a whale. dolphin is? No. Dolphin and this is where but I it said it looks similar. It saying. looks similar. That's where I said I was gonna like come back to the order thing later because like mm -hmm. I don't have a great answer about this. I'm just gonna go out of order. I I would love someone to like contact us, however, and tell me <laughs> something contact more specific than out. I was <laughs> able to find out. No, like where the distinction between dolphins and beaked whales comes in. Um, it, I think it might be in behavior. It might have something to do with the way the teeth are. Mm. Um, it might have something to do with their group sizes. I don't know, diving. I, I could, but, like, basically, according to all, like, overarching characteristics, they're quite similar. I think beaked whales, the biggest difference I could tell is in the way that they look. Um, and, then, and then probably, like, yeah, their habitat and diving behavior a mm -hmm. little bit. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's as simple as that. But nothing was, like, very, like clarified in what I read saying right. that. But like the beak is not it's not a hard beak. It's no, like it's it's just the shape thing, of the yeah. yeah, it's just like a little bit of a like a mouth that sticks out. But it's not like a different um what what would you what would you say? It's not like a it's like a snout. It's not like our carrots and nails versus our skin or something mm -hmm. like that. It's a snout. Yeah, totally. It's like a wolf snout. Mm -hmm. Um that's yeah. how they evolved, right? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. whales went whales went back. Whales went back. So fish started so in the ocean. Yeah, back. yeah, and then like a bunch <laughs> of so like retro. fish crawled on yeah. land, and at a certain point, some of them went back in, and that that is where every sea mammal comes from. Yeah. Is as a land mammal that crawled back in. Very cool. Um, 
So yeah, totally. It's a snout. Okay, so the teeth of Cuvier's beaked whales, um, they only have one pair of teeth, and they're only exposed in males. So like the, the teeth of females never erupt. And this is one of the only things that we really have observed and like know about them, um, is that the teeth in male beaked whales are a sexual characteristic, and they are only used for fighting other beaked whales for female wow. gain. Um, and they, they appear to be, um, let me get this word right, poly, polygynous, not polygamous, polygynous, but th they, essentially it's a male with a harem of females. That's how they've been observed a lot of the time. Um, I should interrupt myself here by saying this is the third in a category tonight of animals that like anyone has barely ever seen. Yeah. There's not a lot of. They're all you know, elusive. There's animals. not a lot. They're this also very elusive. The poorly researched. The, <laughs> the researched, but like not given a lot to go on. Um, so yeah, they they uh, and then and the, uh, the even weirder part is that um, the teeth appear to be unique to each whale, and females select mates based on, based teeth? on tooth shape. Well, wow. that's true in humans too. Yeah. Oh, well, wow. Not mating. But like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the ladies on the continent, maybe. they're like like this like this whale is like mm, it's like smiling and she's like mm, mm. but it's I so make dark like, down there. Show me your How do they even see? They, I mean, I do they I have assume, parasites on their teeth that like maybe they up? maybe they like recruit or hire a Greenland shark to come by and like shine its eye worm on. Yeah, I'm sure they have <laughs> buddies. Yeah, that's probably it. Yeah. No, actually, I got the impression because of their, like, deep living habitat that they were um, Arctic, and that wasn't really true. They're, they're not. They just find deep spaces all over the place. Um, okay, moving on. They weren't catalogued. Nope, categorized. Catalog? They weren't catalogued. They weren't <laughs> named <laughs> and made official until 1823 um, by this guy who I want to talk about for a second, um, Georges Cuvier, who was a naturalist and an anatomist. I want to mention him huh. because these it's are the, what we want to yeah, be. this is like <laughs> our aspirations here is to be these people of leisure, <laughs> but people who, who amateurly and out of enthusiasm, even though we are not doing nearly the amount of detailed um, field work that these people did. Um, not but yeah, yet. yeah, not yet. Exactly. Who knows? Maybe I'll be out there with a net. <laughs> Um, anyway, yeah, um, the skull of the first Cuvier's beaked whale was found on the Mediterranean coast of France in uh, 1806 or 1808 or something like that. Uh, this dude categorized it, and he uh, measured it and compared it to other things and realized it was its own subspecies of, of a beaked whale. Um, so this guy, um, he's considered the founding father of paleontology, and he Whoa. really was one of the establishing... Wow pioneering figures and comparing living animals to fossils and and like establishing that relationship and that's that's pretty um pretty interesting because this is right on the frontier of this entire way of thinking this is the exact same yeah. as that darwin was doing his thing and mm -hmm. all of the darwin contemporaries wasn't. of darwin whose names we never hear who were doing the same research he was were darwin doing wasn't until he was later the second half yeah i think it was century. like 1850s 60s mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Right. so this is um this guy also, I should mention, he's got a pretty infamous rep um, because he did a lot of uh, further anatomical study, including on humans. Um, he was really into trying to prove the uh, differences in races of humans um, by studying anatomy um, and coming up with all sorts of bogus claims. Um, uh, he famously studied a, a South African woman named Sarah Bartman um, and tried to use her different physiological features uh, to like prove like racial differences in humanity, so he's like they're kind of unlike unpopular to hear about. Um, I don't know. It does. It's just one of those figures who's complicated. Like he yeah. did a lot for one field, and he also really dug himself into a terrible hole of humanity by doing things for that field. But right. anyway, Cuvier. This is who this whale is named after. Just for reference, Origin of Species, eighteen fifty nine. Yeah, and I guess he he never got famous. If he did say it, he's not. It's not. He's not. In, in posterity for having said it, for coming up with the exact same theory of evolution that Darwin did. Um, but he was comparing. He was one of the first people who was like, hey, look at this thing and look at that thing. Like, maybe 
there's a relation. I mean, it's on the same track, obviously. Okay. Um, The description of this whale. All beaked whales, they're pretty dopey looking. So, like, where a dolphin has this sort of, like, sleek body shape, and then there's, like, a a nice taper to the tail. Mm -hmm. Um, They're very nice. Beaked whales, they... (laughs) It's very nice. Beaked (laughs) whales, they all look kind of like cigars or, like, blimps. They're just, like, this, like, bolt. And then they have, like, this old... It comes to, like, a kind of nub at the end, and then there's this sort of, like, un... Graceful looking tail at the end of it. Yeah, they look yeah. kind of like manatees or something. Yeah, and yeah. and similar to manatee, the tail does. The head and the tail sleep. looks a little bit small. They're a little like bit small compared the to the body shape. type. I do yeah. drawings of all my animals. I've never seen these both before. Animals, but yeah, okay, so that is because. But yeah, what, why do they, why do they dive so deep? Is it known? And sort of. Yeah. So yeah, they grow about sixteen to twenty three feet. Um, they have retractable flippers that can tuck away while they're swimming. What? Yeah, what? Why? They also don't have a fluked tail. So how other um, dolphin and whale tails, they're kind of like the two fins that make up yeah. the tail. This one, that's it's not, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not convex like a manatee's tail, but it doesn't really point in either. It just has like okay. a very minor like sort of like flat sway in it. Uh, it's like a little dip. It's like this. It's like in my drawing. This is like a sli- like a small, but it's not like it's not like if you put your two hands together. Yeah, it doesn't have like a dimple. In the right. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. They're just they're a little. They look slow. They're little chubs. They look slow. <laughs> <laughs> I they look like they have retractable things. They're a great. Sh- I mean, they they they're very small. They, I mean, that's a convenient feature. They look like they're a great shape for just sort of like they're like a torpedo. They just I think they can just sort of like. Go down. Okay, here's the reason they dive deep. This is the only reason I have. I know how they can dive deep more so than why they dive deep. But basically, they're in that, they're like part of the whales that dive for squid. And if you Mm. live on squid, you have to dive deep. This is Mm -hmm. what I figured out. Um, They don't bite squid. Um, I guess. Bite squid? (laughs) Yeah, like sperm whales, like they're always shown, it's a really popular rendering and artists. I mean, like, there's that huge exhibit at the Museum of Natural History in New York yeah. of, like, squid fights. Epic battle. Yeah, and their their mouth, their, like, little weird arm-sized mouth and their giant head is involved in this, like, ba- like tooth battle. They're, like, a, really, like, attacking a squid. Um, cougars, especially because half of them, being females, don't have teeth that have erupted, um, they suction them up. And they have this expandable throat that aids like the muscles in that aid in like sucking Whoa. squids and what? cephalopods into them <laughs> yeah so they just kind of like they like hoover them. this is yeah um okay here's the interesting stuff about them um why they caught my eye on neil deep diving scrolly fish <laughs> And they are the deepest diving mammal. The longest recorded dive was two hours and 17 minutes. That's the longest recorded dive. That's insane. Um, to a depth of almost 10,000 feet. What? What? I'm not saying that that length of dive was the same as that depth of dive. Right. But those are the two sort of up to and for this yeah. long. That's so insane. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, crazy. This is making me realize like have why my 10,000 foot chain with the Norwegian A body that's wrong. like totally reliant on breathing oxygen but yet you like you yeah do all your like living and it's like how did ten thousand deep down how does the mechanics of their nasal passages work to like oh my god that's my nice part. oh sweet yeah. no i mean like i'm not super like technical about it but um what allows deep dives okay so all diving all deep diving mammals have proportionally smaller lungs than all land mammals or even like less deep diving mammals um, what? They're smaller lungs. They're smaller, um, and that's because they have to collapse. And that's the way that all these animals deal with it. So, like, when they go down, they, like, collapse their lungs, they collapse their heart a little bit, like, they collapse all I, of these organs. I think they just, those things simply collapse under that pressure, right? They're not, like, necessarily doing it to themselves. I mean, it's a function of how they're, I mean, they're, it's not collapsing, like, oh, fuck. I have well, I know they're it's just like, like able to collapse. Yeah, it's something that, that their body they're able does. To withstand uh, they're not. Right, yeah, exactly. Right, 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 right. Yeah. The but, heart can just like what does that even look like? Yeah, what does that? Yeah, mean, I think I think the heart. I'm not prepared to like 
wed myself to that fact, but it was naming different organs that did this. The lungs were the most crucial part to me. That I mean, I'm sure, but the cardiovascular system just does insane things mm -hmm. like under pressure, and I. Yeah, um, I'm sure they're built for something. It's it built it's, so they have a more efficient use of their air, um, and they are much. Their blood is much more capable of extracting oxygen, so they have a higher red blood cell count, um, and they have something in their blood called myoglobin, which also aids in this. Again, this is another, like sort of like, speaking of veins, like an offshoot, like a vein that I didn't go too much into, but there's all these parts of blood, that have a globin, like hemoglobin mm -hmm. or the myoglobin is something that aids in the ability to retain oxygen uh, mm -hmm. and a much more long lasting and like efficient spending capacity. Mm, so um, the lungs are not needed, the blood is just super oxygenated. Right, they don't need bigger lungs, they're just, those lungs are able to collapse and then their blood is able to use the oxygen brought in by those lungs in a totally different way than ours are. Mm. Um, so Wim would be proud. Yeah, well, I know. Oh, no, I was gonna say. We're all doing the Wim Hof <laughs> method training. I won't even go start to go into that because I'll go off on a tangent. But we're learning a lot about oxygen and carbon dioxide and I the, think Wim the Hof usage. Wim studied of, with these whales. Yeah, he like, loomed. Hundred <laughs> percent. Um, okay, and the other thing. Um, oh, so yeah, they have collapsible lungs. The ribs can contract or collapse. You know, the terminology is like you can interpret it different ways. But the entire the entire thing can obviously like shrink and compact a lot and then um their sinuses there are they're not hollow so they there's no air involved in their entire sinus system it's so just like, like straight from the blowhole into the lungs mm -hmm. yeah so like that's not a problem like the, the sinus thing isn't a problem the only problem is allowing the proper amount of time and the proper rate that they are resurfacing for their organs that collapse to expand back out mm -hmm. and the biggest reason that they suffer um, from human interference um, is due to um, sonar pollution, sound pollution. Mm. Um, because they will get, like, and this comes, and for anyone wondering, this comes from all of our uh, activity underwater, um, from wires and from submarines and boats and ev every, everything that we're doing underwater, which is um, another tangent, but like, you should look that up. There's like so much... <laughs> that we're actually doing with like general traffic in yeah. the ocean um and yeah they'll get freaked out by that and they will this sounds like so like really like that really happens but apparently it does they will surface too fast and then they will suffer um the pressure the, like, like the essentially bends. like the bends which yeah. is something that divers yeah. suffer from if you come up too fast like the pressure change um and they are super um they super commonly get beached in sort of like mass numbers. I don't think mass for a Cooper's beaked whale is like a huge amount, but considering like how much they aren't a super populous whale yeah. and they don't travel in huge groups, like the amount that they will beach in is both surprising and indicative of the fact that like a boat comes along and there's a group of them and they all, this happens to all of them. Um, whale beaching in general is kind of a mysterious thing. Like there's not a ton yeah. of like clear activity as to why Either this happens to them or they do it to themselves. Um, there's like theories about it being like much more thing to do with human interference a lot of the time, but um, yeah, anyway, they most of what we know about them because they so rarely appear is from these beached carcasses that show up. Um, it's crazy to think about like we it's like, oh, 10,000 feet, that's so deep, that's so far, but it's like I mean the Greenland shark could go. Maybe, yeah. Well, like, I made that fact of, up before. No, but like, for example, the Greenland shark, what was its rate of speed of travel? Like, oh, like about a mile, mile and, and a half, half per hour. So that, it would take two hours for it to go straight up or yeah, straight down that right. distance. Yeah, right. And that's... So this is at least twice that speed. But it's yeah, this is, this is about two miles down. Right. That's so crazy. That's all for squid. But you do have to go slower with the pressure change. And stuff right, I guess, I guess... Particularly with surfacing, it seems to be an issue. But maybe that's more to do with the fact that I guess they are not compelled to dive down too deep. Like, they're not chasing a squid down from the surface. Like, they're just finding squid when they get down there. And they do, yeah. they have sonar of some sort. Is that what you said? Um, I know. Being disturbed by yeah, I mean, I know that, mo like, uh, my understanding, actually, I didn't read anything with sonar, particularly about beaked whales. I, my understanding, I think, is that all toothed whales use have it. some kind of. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, some sort of echolocation, everything. 
Uh, so the thing is, they also spend proportionally the most amount of time, like those dives are super long, but they, they spend so much time, they have a, um, a pretty like limited amount of time that they spend on the surface. So typically they're only up there for like two to eight minutes before they go back under. But then this other thing I read was like, they have a pretty slow recovery time from their super deep dives. Um, and there was a there was like a missing gap in between these two pieces of information. So like it referenced an elephant seal, which is another animal on the Scrolly website that goes down super deep. But what has been measured in them is they'll go down super deep, they'll come up, they'll do it again. Beak twills, I know they go down super deep, and when they come up, they can't dive very deeply again. However, they only ever come to the surface for a very short time period. Like they don't hang out on the surface. So what I can extract from this is there's a recovery time where they're hanging out at some other level like but where do the they surface. breathe but i mean they have not, to be on the surface to breathe no they right? do but they don't they don't come up and stay there so a lot of other whales come up and then they hang out around the surface area for a okay. while and these don't like they come up and they kind of hang out for two to eight minutes which is a very short interval and then but they don't go on a deep dive again immediately they just right. kind of hang out somewhere else i don't know this was kind mm -hmm. of vague um but that is why they're known as being so shy i guess it's why that sort of anthropomorphic thing has been assigned to them um, maybe it's not. I mean, d animals can definitely be, like, more brazen or more social or more not so social. But there's, like, there's sort of, like, there seems to be, like, a, like, they're not on the surface for very long, but they also can't dive super deep, like, one after another after another, like, over and over again. So, like, mm. I don't know. Maybe they're they're just cruising at some other inverted altitude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's, like, a, there's, like, the... the Prime members lounge. Oh my gosh, I used to fly so much, and now I forget what that's called in the airport. I'm just talking about Amazon Prime because we have to order a Prime lounge. <laughs> well, I mean, squid are so introverted and weird that I feel like the predator of the squid has, has to, to be almost a little introverted mimic, and weird. mimic that. Um, last thing, I'm not ending with like a an exciting fact, but they're not on the endangered list, and that's like something that doesn't mean too much it's like heartening to hear because almost every whale is i feel like but um but it's hard to tell if that's because there just aren't that many of them they're estimated about a hundred thousand in the world but it's really it's a little bit like uh, no one notices them that often so yeah. like yeah they're not super endangered um but they are not but they're not really hunted they're, they're not really hunted them. they're not really like like they're not interacting in areas where humans are interacting nearly as much as other whales are and their yeah. habitat and their food sources are not being quite as... And then, like, unlike the sperm whale, yeah, like, they weren't brought so close to extinction a century ago that we're still talking about it. Right. Um, they're just like this whale that um, a few people have been like, oh, my God, like, there's a beach whale. Or they've been like, oh, my God, what is that? Like, there aren't even many videos of them on YouTube or anything. So. Right. That's the Cougar's beach whale, which is only slightly... Uh, specific compared to every other beaked whale. That's like an entire species that's just like, wow. like uh, unclear. Yeah, the forgotten whales. The forgotten whales. <laughs> the <laughs> not yet just... remembered whales. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing dramatic enough has happened to them and they haven't done anything dramatic enough. Is a beluga a beaked whale? Yeah. Okay. It's a toots whale. No, it, no, no, sorry. It's a toots whale. It's not a beaked whale. It's not a beaked It's its whale. own type. Or a maybe beluga is its own type. It's it was li like in the list that I read of toothed whales. What about a pilot whale? They a pilot whale I want to say is actually they part seem... of the dolphin family. Okay. All yeah. the beaked whales I think have like beaked whale in their name. That's why it's really this is like a very and I I'm not even saying that just because of my own like inability to sort this out like I read like a few websites I looked at were like oh this is one of those categories that's like a little bit hard to parse out mm -hmm. um like there's a lot of non-clarity especially in our nomenclature mm -hmm. like not but I mean there are specifics I just um I didn't give more than like you know eight or ten clicks worth of research into right, it right, but right. um no, but pilots pilots orcas are dolphins yeah I knew and then there's like dolphins. there's like the porpoise dolphin differentiation which has a lot to do with size Right. And then there's the beaked whales, and then there are other toothed whales, and that's like beluga seems to be its own category, narwhal is, sperm whale is, like this sort of thing. Yeah. Orcas are technically dolphins. A dolphin, yeah. Dolphins, which yeah. which really makes you go back to like, okay, like what's the size the thing? A Although for sure, yeah, what the hell is a dolphin? <laughs> but like a dolphin, like a bottlenose dolphin has the beak thing, 
But then, like an orca doesn't. They have little like. They, they, they kind of have like a nose, well. but it's very like have, rounded like, uh, compared to yeah. Type snouts. They're like a, a little sm- sm- snug nose. Such a beautiful animal. Uh, yeah, yeah, orcas really uh, are. I can't wait for the orca episode. Yeah, Paul has dibs on orca. Yeah, get ready. <laughs> and the sperm whale episode. <laughs> wow. Okay. We're starting out low on the whale toe. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Cue the bubble noise. Yeah. Blub, here blub, we blub, go. Blub, blub. Well, what were the superlatives for this week? Mine's the deepest diving sea okay. animal. Deepest diving of mine. Yours is the most psychoactive. Mine is the oldest, most psychoactive, longest and slowest. slowest by rate of tail speed. And ugliest. And ugliest. It's actually winning. And yeah, that's blindest. what I mean. That's why I was like, this is like the real contender. Yeah. And they, I would say they, mine was the least fa- least popular fish in Australia. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe oh, in the world. Okay. For like, Potentially in the world. That kind of like, everybody knew about it. And everybody like totally misunderstood. Sea. Yeah, sure. Wow. Okay. Because I'm sure everyone thinks it's poisonous. Like, I mean, I'm going to go out on a limb and say I'm not alone in thinking that the reason Steve Irwin died was because of a poisonous thing. I like, that's such an that. uh, That's such a like leap of yeah. like there, logic that we all go to with There was a lot of lore no. and drama that like yeah. immediately... Went out, and that was even before Reddit. You know, it's oh, amazing. Shit. Okay, everyone, do your research. Don't listen to the news. Just Good listen, night. Just listen to us. <laughs> just yeah, listen, just to listen to us and our half-assed scientific research. Till next time. Yes, we need a dose of inspiration. This Leviathan of meditation said to me.